The hostility between these two guys is real. March 25th. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. They knock them down! And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living shit out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Kayla Platt, Saturday, March 25th, live on pay-per-view. Welcome back, All the Smoke LA. Uh, we're honored today to have one of the most powerful women in basketball, uh, Vice President of the Lakers, Keisha Nix. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Black women rock. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, that's a mighty title. How did that title come about and how did you end up getting that position? Well, I um, started my career actually in finance, believe it or not, and I did that for about 21 years. Okay. Um, but the last few years, I managed the um, Bank of America sponsorship with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So that got me into sports and sports philanthropy, and I did that job pretty good. And when Jeannie Buss was looking for someone to uh, oversee the Lakers Foundation, she called the Dodgers. The Dodgers referred me. I got a call on a Monday, and by Friday, I had a whole new career. Wow. Mm. I mean, someone who grew up in South Central. LA. What did that mean? I mean, Dodgers was probably a cool opportunity, but there's nothing like the Lakers. What did it mean to you, a girl coming from LA, to be a black woman coming into this position, but the, just the prestige of the Lakers? I mean, I grew up a huge Lakers fan. Right. My family is all LA all day long. Mm -hmm. So I'm from South Central LA, born and raised. Uh, we watched the Dodgers, we watched the Lakers. You know, you could do what you wanted on football, but mm -hmm. those were two teams. There was just no no other thing. Right. And so to to grow up watching, you know, Magic and Kareem and Worthy and, you know, all these Laker legends and to now work with them, to mm -hmm. be a colleague, to call them, you know, or they call me, you know, whenever they need something, it's like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to really pinch myself. And then to be able to go back into the community that I grew up in mm -hmm. and to make opportunities happen for kids that look like me, that is literally something, I, I can't believe it's work. I can't right. believe I'm being paid right. to do this. To do this. You probably like a player, you probably get phone calls, can I get some tickets? Can I get some tickets? Can I get some, t what's, what's that demand been like? And what's kind of, what was the response from your family? Like you said, obviously, you know, huge Laker fans. How did, how, how did that go across with the family? Oh my God, my family is so excited. My son is probably getting the most of right. this because he's only an only imagine. child. Mm -hmm. um, and so he gets to go to, you know, everything. But my family is just, they're really proud of me. Um, they are the ones that don't ask for tickets, mm -hmm. and they could. Mm -hmm. It's the people that shouldn't, that right. do. <laughs> like, you got the nerve, right? Yes, right. <laughs> yes. Oh, got the week of uh, LeBron making history. You can't imagine how oh, my phone yeah. was blowing up. But, you know, I do what I can, and I usually tell people, just let me bless you. Mm. Don't ask me. Let yeah, me bless you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have um, we have an allocation of tickets for the community that we give out, like, every single game. Oh, awesome. And so, I, you know, I meet people every day that, you know, have youth, and I'm like, hey, do they want to come to a Lakers game? Mm -hmm. And they say yes, and I'm able to do that for them. That's awesome. We got a chance to see each other the other night. Um, I got to moderate the Showtime Laker panel, which, like you said, we grew up watching these guys, and to be able to sit down and, and talk to them for an hour and a half. I mean, what is it like mixing elbows and, like you said, being colleagues with guys like Magic and Kareem and Worthy and, and, and dealing with guys like that, and then also LeBron and everything that kind of comes with that Laker title? You know, it like I said, it's it's amazing, and um, it it gives me the opportunity to change other people's lives. Um, it's not something that I take lightly because you know we have this iconic brand, this global brand, and we can use that to really create opportunities for black and brown youth that otherwise wouldn't have it. And then when you think about our legends and our current players, how many of them grew up single parent households, at boys and girls clubs, at park and recs, if they didn't have somebody look out for them or some type of community advocate, they wouldn't even be where they are today. Mm -hmm. So I feel like 
the jobs that we have in philanthropy and in community are so vital and Absolutely. so important, you know, because if if it weren't for some of the programs that we have, we wouldn't have the Magics and the mm -hmm. Shacks, you know, um, and the LeBrons. Right. They all have stories mm -hmm. and a lot of them are really similar. So I really um, understand the responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I may only have one uh, biological child, but I feel like the youth in my community all belong to mm -hmm. me. I love that. Because it takes a village. Um, obviously, getting an opportunity to work with the Dodgers, now the Lakers. Was that always your goal to try to find a way to get into sports or did that just kind of pop up? It kind of popped up. I always loved sports. My goal was really to be able to just do work in the community. So while I was working in finance and it was paying the bills, I was doing community relations for free. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting on that rebate check to <laughs> you know come. Um, I was at Merrill Lynch for 18 years um, working in high net worth finance, but I found a way to bring those wealthy individuals to Compton, to South Central, to Watts. Um, so because of my day job, I was able to create other opportunities. And after about 18 years and Bank of America bought Merrill, they asked me to join community relations. And I said, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do this for real. I want to do this, you know, for play. Because mm -hmm. going into community relations was not lucrative. It was a pay cut, a mm -hmm. big pay cut. And my son was going off to college. And as a single mom, like, who makes that kind of decision? But I knew that I would not end up where I really wanted to um, if I didn't take that leap of faith. And I didn't know that it was going to be with the Lakers. I didn't know that it was going to be with the Dodgers. I just knew that serving my community was what I was born to do. Being a fan, first and foremost, and now working with them, was there anyone that you were kind of in awe, whether it be Jeannie, Magic, Bron, I may be forgetting people, when you kind of first got the job and getting your feet under you? I would say, well, definitely in awe of all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, but when when asked, you know, Magic is just the ultimate, you know, Laker for me. And being able to work with him, um, my son was in his um, mentoring scholarship program. Oh, really? Okay. So I got to see, you know, the other side of him. And now to be able to work with him is just amazing. He is all that that you see. Mm -hmm. um, always so upbeat, always so uplifting. And um, he was one of the very first people to call and congratulate me when I became um, vice president, um, the first black female VP mm -hmm. in the history of the Lakers. That's big. That's really big. It's really big. Indeed. Congratulations. Indeed. Yeah. Um, Jeannie, a friend of the program. I've known Jeannie for a long time. Uh, talk That's to us about friend. her. Yeah. Jack has a crush on her. But it's That's a, my it, friend. It's a professional man. crush. That's my friend. It's a professional crush. No, there's girls who have girls, girls yeah. crush on, on yeah. Jeannie. Um, Jeannie's amazing. Um, being able to work, you know, directly with her um, daily, um, she's definitely somebody that I look up to. Um, she said, you know, it's okay to be the first, but it's not okay to be the only. And, you know, those words, you know, inspire me. You know, she's so smart. But what I love most about her, she's so humble. Mm -hmm. She is just so humble. Like, you know, she's just walking around the office. You know, she's regular. She parks in the same places that we park our cars mm -hmm. in. And she doesn't ask for a lot of special privileges. Mm -hmm. um, and she works hard. Like, sometimes I feel guilty if I'm leaving the office and she's her car is still right. there. You know, she's an owner that, that believes in working and showing up. Mm -hmm. And so she's somebody that I definitely admire. And I'm just, you know, I feel blessed to be able to work and learn so much from her. Mm -hmm. Kobe was someone who was big with giving back to the youth and the community and obviously the Mamba Academy. Um, any stories about Kobe? You get a chance to meet Kobe? Yes. So Kobe's last year was my first year. Okay. And so we didn't do a lot of work together that, that year. He did things for the foundation. And it wasn't until like Jersey retirement time um, that I started working with him and the president of his um, organization, his corporation. And I helped them raise a lot of money for the Mamba Foundation. And they came back to me and said, you know what? We like you. We want to work with you. <laughs> and so we started to do um, a lot of projects together. And I was able to sit on a panel with Kobe during Women's History Month um, in 2018. And that was amazing just to see how excited he was about women in sports, just like how when he played. Right. You know, and I just felt like, wow, he's going to really change the game, you know, for women in sports. And so... It was a blessing to be able mm -hmm. to work so closely with him. I really felt like, I mean, he was the main push, I feel like, as, as a former athlete that really started like, okay, we because we all supported the WNBA, but it just wasn't, you know, we watched it. 
You know, how do you come out and really show support and, and get the gear and, and really let people know that we are fans of this? And I really credit him for really kind of making that push, not only in the WNBA, but even in college, women's college athletics, uh, to kind of be like, okay, like, hey, we do support. Let's really show them how we support. And, you know, I always, you know, took my hat off uh, to him for that. Um, thoughts on LeBron's longevity, not only in basketball, but the effect he has in the community off the court? I mean, it's phenomenal um, to know that he has created a whole school. Mm, I mean, right. just the sounds of that, you know. I mean, yes, he broke the scoring record, and yes, he's been in the league for 20 years. But he designed a school, and he's he's changing lives of, you know, the young people in Akron. And he's giving them opportunities to go to college. And he's not only helping them, he's helping their parents. Mm. You know, it's it's a family affair, you know, with him. And so um, it may sound crazy, but I'm more proud of what he does off the court, even though he's phenomenal right. on the court, because what he's doing off the court will go so much further yeah. and will last so long. And when I think about, sometimes I look at um, interviews he did coming right out of high school, and then I think about how this man never went to college and when you hear him speak, he is so know. educated mm -hmm. and so on point. And I'm thinking, wow. I mean, that is just, you know, the power of hard work. Hard work is the great equalizer, mm -hmm. I always say. And so when I look at that, you can't tell me that our young people can't do things like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he said, I'm not going to be a product of my environment. Right. I know where I was born and raised, but I'm going to do more than that. And he defied all the odds. And so he's just another one that I feel like our young people can really look up to. Mm, I love that. What is, a, what, what's a day in the life for you like? What, what kind of stuff in the community are you doing or around the organization? What kind of stuff do you do? Oh my God, everything. So I left, <laughs> I left speaking I'm at a high school here. this morning uh, to come over here to see you guys. Thank you very um, much. Yes. Thank you. And um, I go to all of our home games. I have a fundraising element at every game. Um, I have 200 community people, youth, and organizations that I host at every single game. Um, I'm building basketball courts all around Los Angeles. I think we're a little over 40 at this point. Wow. Um, you know, I have health and fitness and basketball clinics. We work with over 20 boys and girls clubs. That's over 100,000 young people. Um, last night at the game, we flew in the Jubilee Singers from Fisk University oh, in wow. Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. They sang the national anthem. Last year was the first time we ever had the black national anthem sung at a Lakers game. And that was thanks to our, our work with Fisk University. Um, so, I mean... I'm everywhere as much as I can be. It's not just um, in Los Angeles, but mostly in Los Angeles and really in our under-resourced communities. That's where, you know, the need is, is important. And it's important for me to show up and not just send the check or send the basketballs or send the resources. I want them to see me. Mm -hmm. I want them to understand that the person that makes these decisions looks like them, right. looks like their mom, looks mm -hmm. like their grandmother, their sister. I want them to understand that. And so every opportunity that I get to go out and, you know, flash the ring. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I noticed that. The thing you know, is heavy. Because not everybody, you know, mm -hmm. especially not a, a lot of women, you know, have that. And so I'm so proud of this. Mm -hmm. And so I do it so that the young people that I serve understand what's possible. Absolutely. They got to see it to believe it. That, that part. What goes into planning um, a showcase like a HBCU halftime and stuff like that? Like, how difficult and tedious you have to be to make sure everything goes right with that? You know, you have to um, have to take a lot, mm -hmm. and you have to understand what the greater good, who this is going to really serve. Mm -hmm. And so, not everyone always sees your vision. Um, you know, I'm one who, you know, is is positive, and so I think about five years ago, some of this stuff that I'm getting done would not have been. Able, but because of social justice, because of things that happened during the pandemic, there are so many more opportunities. And so you kind of have to have patience mm -hmm. and you have to understand that not everything that you want to do is going to happen overnight and not everybody sees your vision. But if you can just have the patience and the wherewithal to see it through, mm -hmm. then you can make something like an HBCU, 
You know, we had the very first HBCU come to a Lakers game uh, three years ago. We started with FAMU. Then we had Southern. Then last year we had Tennessee State. Now we got Fisk. Those things didn't happen before. Mm. And so I could have gotten angry or frustrated, but I just kept saying, in due time, in due time. How hard is it, real quick, not to cut you off, Jack, to kind of weed out, because obviously everyone wants to be able to attach their name to the Laker brand. How hard is it to weed out what you choose to do and what you may pass on? 95% of my job is saying no. Oof, mm. that's tough. Believe it or not, 95% because we get that many I requests. Can imagine. There's that many amazing organizations that I have to say no that mm. much. And that's really one of the most challenging parts of my job. And uh, Jeannie Buss and Linda Rambis told me that when, when I got there, that is going to be like, we, we want you because we feel like you can do that. And so it, it becomes challenging. And sometimes I create more work for myself, my team, because I don't say no. I say, well, we can't do that, but. <laughs> but, right. Okay, how about if we do this and we'll start here? And so it creates more work, but it also creates more opportunity. Um, and so it's just something that, you know, I want unlimited resources, but we don't have unlimited resources. Believe it or not, I have to fundraise. Mm -hmm. All these projects that I'm talking about, there's not just some magical person writing a check. I have to go out and fundraise, and the Lakers allow me to use 100% of what we I raise to put back into the community. Nice. Oh, so they're nice. extremely generous. They take care of all of our overhead and administrative costs. So we don't have to worry about that. But it behooves me and is in my best interest to go out there and make money for the foundation. Mm. You've opened up many boys and girls clubs. How can we talk about that? Sure. Because that I think that's awesome to say that you not just open one, but you open many. Yes. So one of my favorites, and I'll probably get in trouble for this, but I have to say it is historical. Challengers Boys and Girls Club in South Central LA. Challengers um, has been around for a long time, and we have a Lakers basketball court there. And as of last summer, I got purple bleachers in there. So I'm so <laughs> excited about that. Those bleachers were a nightmare. I didn't want the kids to get hurt. Um, we have an outdoor court. Um, they actually have a dental lab in the Boys and Girls Club. Wow. And they take care of the youth during the week, and on the weekends, they open it up to the community. Um, they have, like, a sound studio we're working on. I mean, you think about it's life-changing. It's, it's not just the days when, you know, they were just watching the kids because the parents didn't have something to do. We built a STEM lab there with our last championship through the NBA. We were able to build a STEM lab. So what we're teaching these young people at the Boys and Girls Club is not just sports. It's STEM, it's STEAM, it's arts and culture. It's all the things that they need to get them to college, to get them to their first career. So when you think about it, it's not just, okay, we're going to, you know, drop our kids off. They're going to, you know, play mm -hmm. basketball outside for a couple of hours. No, they're actually learning. Doing stuff. And especially during the pandemic, it was challenging to keep those clubs open, but it was necessary. It was really necessary. So they can have somewhere to go. And it was the only place that they could sometimes log onto a computer. Mm -hmm. The only place. Well, I think so often, you know, especially in, in, in the communities that are underserved, we want them to, you know, get out of that street life or don't do this, don't do that. But then what are we arming them or tooling them with when we tell them not to do that? Exactly. So, I mean, things like this are instrumental uh, for the youth. Exactly. How, uh, how do you work with current and past players um, when, you, when you need the guys to support a cause? And is it any, is a two question, and is it anybody that's always available when you call them? It's going to sound funny, but they're almost always available. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they love they love doing it. Yeah. You know, and I love working with our legends as well as our current players. You know, during the season, we're very mindful of the schedule. Mm -hmm. So maybe we don't call on our current players as much mm -hmm. or we, you know, we get them in and out. Our legends, oh my God, it's like a reunion every time you see them. You saw them mm -hmm. the other night. We had dressing rooms set up for all of them. Why do they all end up in the one same room. dressing room? <laughs> in one room. You know, um, and it's like that. Literally, um, I feel like I'm working with family. Mm -hmm. um, when I first got the promotion, I remember coming to a game and James Worthy was sitting in like row A and I walked by and he was like, all hail to the V. Like, he was so happy for me and Dope. so excited. He was introducing me to people. And I was just like, wow, this you know, they, they treat me like mm -hmm. a little sister. 
And I really, really appreciate that. And they know there isn't anything that we wouldn't do for them. Right. And so when I call, it's not like it goes to voicemail, you know, they answer. Or mm-hmm. if they text me, I'm like, okay, what do you need? You know, what what can we help you to accomplish? Because they all have you know, their own passions, their own foundations or charitable efforts that they're working on. And we do a lot to support those efforts. Mm, love it. Uh, in 2021, you were voted Sports Illustrated most one of the most 100 influential black women in sports. Uh, knowing your journey, knowing where you came from, what did that mean to you? That meant so much to me, Matt, um, because I had just gotten the promotion a couple weeks before that. And I was like, Nobody knows. Like I was, you know, like a little, I don't know, taken back. And my son was like, mom, just calm down. You know, Mm -hmm. it'll happen. And I was like, I know, but it was still the pandemic. You know, Mm -hmm. things were different. And one of my girlfriends jokingly said, I'm going to call Sports Illustrated. And my son was like, do not do that. (laughs) Like he could just see the wheels turning in our minds, you know. And so, and we didn't. But then for that to happen, um, I was like, oh my God. He said, I told you, you didn't have to do it. Like it it happened. And then for Magic to call and for Magic to tweet about it, mm. I was like, who needs media when you got right, Magic? Exactly. Oh, <laughs> powerful, <laughs> powerful. Um, obviously, you've been able to have a very successful uh, business career and in, 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 in giving back to the youth, but all while you were a single mom raising young, a young black man and you've spoke to on your son two or three times and every time you speak on him, you light up. So speak to your guys' relationship, your bond, and how tough was getting on, you know, kind of getting your grind to where you are now as a single mom? It was definitely not easy, but my job was making it look easy. And so, like I said, we grew up in South Central. Um, he went to Dorsey High School, mm-hmm. um, not, you know, a prestigious, you know, private school or anything. Um And while I was working in finance, believe it or not, there were times when I had to take him to work because I didn't have anybody to watch him. Mm. And he grew up there, literally. I I found out I was pregnant um, a couple months after getting that job. And I was so afraid back in 1994 that I was gonna lose my job. So I had to hide it, you know, until like I couldn't hide it anymore. And so he literally was almost born at Merrill Lynch. Fast forward, I started there at 24. 24 years later, he started at Merrill Lynch. Oh, wow. As a financial advisor. Wow, that's dope. In the same office um, as me. And I'm just like, wow, that's how God brings it back full circle, Mm -hmm. you know? He started out much higher than where I started. But just those days when I had him in the office, you know, it really influenced and impacted his life. And now to be able to share the success I have you know, with the Lakers and the things that I'm doing. The reason why he, he wanted to come today, but he's teaching financial literacy at two schools. That is so cool. And he though. said, Mom, oh, I want to be there, but I, I really <laughs> I really like the kids. I, mm-hmm. I really, and I said, well, you go do what you got to do, and I'll do what I have to well, do. We'll make sure when we film again, we'll look, give him a heads up, you can come hang out for the day. But that's really, I mean, that's, Dope because, you know, obviously, you know, Jack and I being in our space and we would bring our kids around and they inspire to be what we do. So on the flip side, same thing. You were bringing him to work and he, you know, he aspired to be what his mom was doing. So I think that's, and it's 24 and 24 and you know how instrumental that is to the to the lake or so it was meant to be. It was written. It was written. It was written. And he graduated from that program in Beverly Hills as only the second black male in the last 10 years to graduate from that program. Super dope. <laughs> What else needs to be done to have more women, particularly women of color, uh, in the forefront of male-dominated spaces and, and, and on not just in the space, but in leadership roles, do you feel? We need more advocates. We need more people like you that are willing to highlight, you know, mm-hmm. what it is we're doing and why we're important. We need sponsors, meaning when I'm not in a room, I need somebody to be out there advocating for me or for the next woman and, you know, speaking good on our name so that, you know, someone else wants to hire us or promote us. Um, It's really important to have male advocates, very important. I mean, it's a male-dominated, you know, field. Um, No matter how much we accomplish, we have to acknowledge that. And so without a male advocate, it's a little challenging. And then as women, we have to also be secure in ourselves and not worry about not helping somebody. You can't be the only one all the time. And you can't think that, oh God, if I help her, it's gonna take away from me. What's for you is for you, Mm -hmm. you know? And believe it or not, I've been hurt by more, you know, women that looked like me than helped 
up until a certain point. Mm -hmm. I was helped by more Caucasian men than I was anybody else. And that's starting to change, and I'm happy about that. And so I have to make sure I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I don't fall into that trap. Right. I want to help the next Keisha Nix. Absolutely. Because so many more people can be me than can be LeBron. Absolutely. Or they can be Matt Barnes, mm -hmm. or it can be Steph. You know, so many more people. So I need to make sure that I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm grooming the next generation. I think that's dope. What would you tell, I mean, obviously you got a lot more to do and accomplish, but what would you tell your younger self? Ooh, I would tell my younger self, you know what, just don't listen to society. Don't listen to the odds. Don't mm -hmm. become a product of your environment. Don't buy into the stereotype. You know, um, yeah, I'm a single mom. Yes, my mom was 17 when she had me, but that's okay. You know, it's not about where you start. Mm -hmm. It's about where you finish, and it's about the journey along the way. Mm -hmm. And so I think too often times we get discouraged you know, um, I'm I'm proud. I'm 53 years old, proud of my age. And I feel like there's so much more that I can do. Um, there was a time when people would be like, oh, no, it's retirement time. I'm like, retirement? I got two or three more careers left in me, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. There's so many more things that I want to do. So I would tell my younger self that, you know, the sky is the limit. And it's really about, you know, what you make of it. Mm. You definitely don't get 53 from me. <laughs> Easy My now. son's 28. I'm just saying. I'm just saying she don't look 53. I... <laughs> Jeez. Got to watch out for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, a, a dream job you're sitting in right now, but what is uh, what is your ultimate goal? You know, I, I said that I wanted to run my own foundation, and I'm not saying that I don't want to do that at some point, but I feel like what I'm doing right now is so beneficial. Um, I want to be able to take what I'm doing to the next level. Uh, meaning I want what I'm doing to somehow be able to impact um, minorities in leadership in sports. I want to see doors opened for coaches, front office, general managers. I don't want it to just stop right here. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to keep having the same conversations on all the sports shows about no black coaches in, you know, whatever, the NFL or the NHL or whatever, you know, I want to make sure that we're doing what we need to do. We have to make sure that everybody is equipped and ready. Prepared, right. Be prepared. I had that conversation in the car on the way mm -hmm. here. Sometimes the opportunity is there, but are you ready for the opportunity? So I want to make sure that our young people that are coming up are qualified and ready, and then make sure that those doors get open for them. Mm, I love it. All right, quick hitters. Hopefully this hasn't been too painful for you, mm -hmm. but quick hitters, first thing to come to mind, let us know. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Oh, God. Um, okay, um, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. um, Michelle Obama. Got to bring the Obamas, so there's three. Um, Martin Luther King and Diana Ross. Nice Ooh. five. That's a good one. I'm going to put you on the spot right here. Okay. Five most important Lakers. Oh, this question has gotten a lot of people in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten a lot Let me of flip it. Your five favorite players. All time. All time. Okay. Your starting five of the Lakers. Still going to get me in a little trouble, but... <laughs> okay, Magic Johnson. Yeah. Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. LeBron James. Mm-hmm. This is when it gets dicey. Oh. The rest of Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of Showtime? There you go. That'll work. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Stuck on the Island, which three shows or movies you're watching? All reality shows. The Real Housewives of everything. Uh, everything. Of everything. Oh, you one of them, huh? I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. My girl be DVR and filling the whole yes. DVR with that man. Yes. You don't delete that shit. My, my son is like, you are so ratchet, mom. I cannot believe you're watching this. Um, and all Law and Order. I watch Law and Order okay. every day, all yeah. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dope. Nice. Um, five most influential women in sports. Ooh. Um, she's she's not in sports right now, but Robin Roberts no is question. just no absolutely hands down. All she's been through. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody that you know I really look up to and admire. Um, 
Gosh, I got to take it back. I got to say Billie Jean King. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I admire. Um, Jeannie Buss, my Absolutely. boss. Of course. Mm-hmm. You know, um, hands down there. Um, let me see. Lisa Leslie, just for mm-hmm. what she has done for the WNBA. And then I would round it out with... Don't be afraid to throw yourself in there now, God damn it. Nope, I'm going to go with Serena. Ooh, go. yeah. Nice. Serena, that's it. We need to get Serena on the show. Go ahead. <laughs> Message on the board. For inspiring the youth, what would it be? If you had a billboard to inspire the youth, what would that message be? Um, what I said earlier, hard work is the great equalizer. Mm. Hard work is the great equalizer. If you could have, if you could see one guest on our show, who would it be? But you have to help us get your answer on the show. Ooh. Um, you guys have had so many great people on the show. Who would I want to see on here? Mm -hmm. You know so many great people. I do know a lot of good people. Um, (laughs) Oh, God, that's a tough one. Because you guys can get anybody. Uh, 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 (laughs) uh, You may think. uh, I mean, I would love to see Oprah, but I don't have that power. Not yet. Okay, so don't say Oprah. You got to be somebody you can help us with. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping it was going to go in reverse. You guys would be like, okay, we'll get her. You could come. But uh, but I like how she said, she said, I don't have that power yet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, coming. Yeah, it's yeah, coming. Yeah. It's coming. I think she has it already. Um, let's get Robin Roberts. Ooh, that would be dope. That would be dope. That would be, be dope. Really dope. She's a legend. Yeah. Definitely yes. be honored to have her on yes. the show. Yeah. Well, Keisha, we appreciate your time. We know you have a very busy day, but thank you for making time for us. And we will continue to advocate for not only you, but people that look like you and people that look like us to continue to open those doors. We, we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, guys. Thank this you for was, being man. here. This was not painful at all. No, I'm no, so no. proud of you. <laughs> no, she, yeah, we, so we talked the other day. She was a little nervous. She's just like, uh, you know, just, uh, I'm just like, I promise we got you, baby. We we'll got make you. sure it goes smooth. We got so, you. We got you. You made it through unscathed. And then again, next time we come, hopefully your, your son can come hang out. And you know, if you need me in the community, I'm around. So definitely. Thank you very much. Thank we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being thank here. You. Keep leading the way. Thank, thank you. you so much. All the smoke. Keisha Nix of the Los Angeles Lakers. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. The hostility between these two guys is real. March 25th. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez takes on the smooth technician and former champ, Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. They knocked some down! And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living shit out of you. You're not gonna do nothing? David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant, Saturday, March 25th, live on Pay-Per-View.